All right. Hi, I'm Mr. Tyler Minks, and I am the civics teacher here in eighth grade at Pocahontas Middle School. And today we're doing a mock trial because we've been talking all about civil and criminal cases, and so we're going to see what the court procedures look like. We've rearranged the entire room for that purpose, so we're excited to get started. All right, folks, are we ready? Yes. Oh, come on. Are we ready? Are we, are we excited? Oh, I'm yes. so ready. Okay, cool. All right, so we've already talked about a lot of this already before, okay? We've been talking about the different procedures in court procedures, right? We've talked about things like arraignments. We've talked about fun vocabulary words like convictions. Okay, we're going to do all of that today. And everyone has a role, okay? If you're in the jury, what do you think your role is going to be today? Someone raise their hand and tell me. Natan, take notes, okay? So if you don't have anything to take notes with, do not stress. I'm going to give you a moment in just a second to go grab some paper off the shelves and get some pencils so you can have something to take notes with, okay? What do you think would be important to take notes on? And I'll be with you in just a second, Lucas, I promise. Harper. Each Yeah, because what are you going to have to do in the end as the jury? Guilty or not guilty. Yeah, it's up to you, everyday people, okay? Some of you might be police officers, some of you might be nurses, some of you might be all sorts of things, okay? So your job is to listen to the facts of the case, hear both of our lawyers, and then determine whether or not you think this person is innocent or guilty, okay? And we'll talk about that and who that person is in a little bit, all right? Uh, are there any questions right now or anything that I can help you with right now? Jemana. I have to stand up because every time um, we're talking with the judge, it's like, no, you're on the other side of the court to stand up. Yeah, so for my friends in the middle, anytime that you're speaking to the judge, that's called addressing the court. Okay, so out of respect, you're supposed to stand whenever you're speaking. Um, for my witnesses, so I've got a police officer, I have a defendant, we have all sorts of witnesses here today, an expert who looks very expert today. Okay, when you come and sit in the witness box, you don't need to stand because you're already being interviewed. You don't necessarily need to stand, okay? Cool. Any other questions? That's a good one. All right, so let's do this. I want my jury members, if you've got your own supplies, that's fine. If you need to grab some from the back, do that. So you have something to take notes with, okay? While you're getting ready to get something to take notes with, I want all my friends with a script. Just make sure you know when you're gonna speak. Okay, I'll let you know. If you don't know when you're supposed to go, I will give you some heads up. So for this card, is it Martinez? Or Martinez. Oh, Martinez. Yeah, that's the city that we're talking about today. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so the last week when I spoke out, I just wrote my last time. Oh, yeah. What are we going to say? So that's a great question because it's going to depend on what the jury decides. If the jury decides not guilty, then that's what we're going to so announce. Exactly. And I'll probably have the jury specifically say guilty or not guilty, but we'll get there, okay? Um, you'll notice as you go through the script, okay, that there is a gray box every once in a while. Can you take one pin and pass it around the jury for me? Okay. So there's a gray box as we go through our little script. Those gray boxes are a great chance for us to stop, okay? and us to check in and talk about different aspects of court procedures. So that's kind of the plan for that, all right? Jury members, do you all have stuff to take notes with? All right, you have one more task. You didn't know you were gonna have so many responsibilities this morning. Your next task is you all need, in about 30 seconds, to decide who is gonna be your jury, jury for person, which is essentially the one who speaks on your behalf. Does that make sense? No, yes? How do we feel about that? Okay, so why don't you talk amongst yourselves and figure out who you want to represent your group, whether you want to vote over that or just discuss it, okay? <laughs> Love the leadership. I was going to say, I'm getting a vibe that Harper might be a leader here. <laughs> All right, so Harper is going to be our four person, and what that means is that she kind of manages the group, okay? Because when you all go to deliberate, there's going to be lots of opinions. It's Harper's job to kind of make sure there's clear arguments happening, and then whatever you all decide is going to be communicated by you, Harper, to the rest of the court. So if you decide this person is guilty, then you're going to convey that, okay? 
One last bit of housekeeping that I promise we're getting in to our wonderful trial today. Three basic rules that are true in a courtroom, right? This is gonna be true if you end up in a traffic court in Caroline County, okay? This is gonna be true if you end up in court for whatever reason, okay? Where we're, we're respectful, we're professional, we are present. So what that means, especially if you're in the jury, if you're just kind of staring at the ceiling tiles, someone's future is in your hands, okay? So you gotta take it seriously, right? Someone's had a very terrible accident. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. So you're very responsible for their future. So we wanna make sure that we're being present for that. And then obviously my two attorneys, make sure that we're here and we're respectful and professional because you're presenting something to the judge and to the jury, okay? Cool, I've talked enough. Any questions? Are we ready? Okay, we're gonna do wonderful things, I can't wait. If you mess up, not a big deal. I'm gonna try to follow along with you, help you out if you need, all right? Without further ado, court is now going to be in session with Lucas's line. Take it away, Lucas. All rise. <coughs> Department one of the Superior Court is now in session. Judge Serafina presiding. Please be seated. Wonderful. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Calling the case of the people of the state of California versus Victoria. Are both sides ready? Ready for the people oh, oh. That's okay. Good job. All right, and Jermont? Ready for the defense, Your Honor. Will the clerk please swear in the jury? All right. Will the jury please stand and raise your right hand? Do each of you swear that you will fairly try the case before this court, and that you will return a true verdict according to the evidence and the instructions of the court to help you God? Please say, I do. I do. I do. You may be seated. All right, so let's pause here. Quite a few different things have happened, right? We're swearing in the jury. Why? Why do you think that's necessary? Raise your hand and let me know if you have an idea. Yeah, Lola. So that they will tell the truth. But what if, does that just necessarily mean I'm going to tell the truth just because I raised my hand and said, I'm going to tell the truth? Can we necessarily rely on that? Does that now automatically mean I'm going to tell the truth? Are those magical words? <laughs> Maybe for some people. Piper. Uh, have liability. Say that again. Have yeah, basically, you've now given a verbal testimony. Sometimes it's recorded in court, and sometimes it's at least recorded here by the court reporter, okay, that you have confirmed verbally that you'll be telling all the truth and nothing but the truth. So what's going to happen if you don't do that? And it's not just for the jury, but for witnesses. What do you think might happen? Yeah. You could get in trouble. You could get in trouble, okay? There's a fancy word for getting in trouble in this case. It's called perjury, okay? I know my mark is dying. Perjury, okay? which is a serious problem, it's a serious crime for that matter, okay? So just be aware of that. So what's about to happen, we've just done our opening, or we've just done our swearing in, so now we're going to be moving into opening statements, okay? And as an attorney, this is a really important part because your whole point, right, is that you're trying to convince the jury, okay? So that's who you're talking to. The judge is important too, but the judge's real job is what? What do you think? Because a lot of people think the, ju the judge's job is always to say, well, you're guilty, you're not guilty. But that's not the whole story. Yeah, Brooklyn. <coughs> Amazing, absolutely, yes. Okay, kind of like Speaker of the House, which we've talked about before. The judge is here to make sure that, one, there's a fair trial, okay? Because remember we watched that video about um, an entire trial that had gone awry, right? Because the trial was not fair, okay? So the judge's whole purpose here is to make sure everything is orderly, all right? Whose job is it then to decide who's guilty or not guilty? In this case, the jury, all right? So defense attorneys, this is your kind of first introduction. And Aiden, you're gonna do amazing. Do not be nervous, I promise. You're gonna do great, all right? Take it away. Your Honor, and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defendant has been charged with crime of driving or taking the car belonging to someone else without their permission of the 
the permission of the owner. Right. The evidence will show that a 2004 Corvette was stolen on the night of February 8th. The next day, the defendant was arrested driving the stolen car. The defendant's fingerprints were all on the keys used to steal the car. The evidence I present mm -hmm. will prove to you that the defendant is guilty as charged. Great. Thank you very much. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, under the law, my client is presumed innocent until proven guilty. During this trial, we heard no real evidence against my client. We will come to know the truth, that Alyssa was just riding in a stolen car by someone else, and the car stolen by someone else. After finding out the car was stolen, Alyssa was just trying to do the right thing by returning the car to its owner. Therefore, my client is not Wonderful opening statements. All right, so now, after these opening statements, what's going to happen if you look at our gray box there? Anyone see that? It says, after the opening statements, well, what's going to happen? Aiden. Witnesses are called to testify. Exactly. Witnesses are called to testify about what they know about the case. What's the case? What's, what's the crime in question? It's like we're in a murder mystery. The stolen car. The stolen car. Okay? The case of the stolen Corvette car. All right? What is, the, what is Aiden's argument here? And you can look back on the other page here. Yeah, right? So he's the defense attorney. He says he uses several piece of, uh, pieces of evidence. First of all, he says the evidence will show that this car was stolen on the night of February 8th. What is his evidence for that, if you look at what he said? That's at that on page 4. If anyone find me, what is his evidence? Say so that one more time. Okay, so we're going to use fingerprints okay, to see what was on the car keys. Anything else? Was the car found outside this person's house? They were driving it the next day. Yeah, they were found in the car driving the vehicle. Okay? So Aiden's got a tough job ahead of him. All right? What about our public defender? What's Jamana's argument here? Not guilty Great, yes. Right? The whole point is to protect Alyssa in this matter to plead that she is not guilty. Okay? In fact, she says very confidently, you'll hear no real evidence against my client. That's a pretty strong statement. Okay? All right, any questions so far? We feeling okay? Yeah, yeah. I just want to ask. Yes, please. To remember to speak loud and clear so everyone in the courtroom can hear. Okay, so we want to make sure everybody knows what's going on. Absolutely. Sad. Absolutely. Okay? All right, cool. Thank you, Ms. Sandigani. Sure. All right, Your Honor, take it away. The pros prosecution may Good. The people call the owner of the car. All right, so the people are calling the owner of the car which is Luke, and Lucas, as our bailiff, you're going to kind of escort him up to the front if you would like. You don't have to, but if it would bring you joy, I would be more than happy for you to do so. You want to? Why not? All right. So the idea here is as the bailiff, the bailiff is kind of assisting the judge in maintaining order. And if someone gets real unruly, the bailiff is going to bring them out of the room. Yeah. All right. So you're going to escort Luke up to the front. Can you do that for me, Lucas? Of course. All right. Come on. Indeed. <laughs> we should have like ceremonial music as we go up to the front. <laughs> Beautiful. Wonderful. All right, let's keep going. Clerk. All right. Now Lola is, maybe we're in a small little county court because Lola's playing two different roles today. She's got two jobs. She's both our clerk and our reporter. Please spell your last name for the record. Take it away, Luke. How do you spell your last name? K-A-U-F-M-A-N. All right. Why do you think that's important, by the way? I love it. <laughs> Full immersion. <laughs> Why do you think it's important to spell your name? I know that's an odd question, perhaps, but yeah. They get the right person on the record. Yeah, we want to make sure everything on this record is correct. Just like we've asked for your agreement, and we've sworn you in. We've asked for your agreement that you're telling the truth. We want to make sure that we're recording the right information whenever we can. All right, um, Deputy DA, take it away, District Attorney. 
Luke, where do you work? Hi, I'm Martinez, car sales. What's the address of your business? One of two Main Street, Martinez. Were you working on, were you working there on February 8th? Yes, I was. Was one of the cars you had for sale, the 2004 Red Corvette license number 5CDX239? Yes. Did you see the car on the lot on February 8th? Yes, the car is there. We'll be close on that. All right, Luke, you can go back to your seat. All right, jury, let's check in. What information have we gathered about this case so far? You just heard from the victim in this case. Yes, Peyton, thank you for raising your hand. The crime was driving a stolen car. The crime is driving a stolen car, okay. Did we get any extra information at all from that witness? You may or may not have. There's not really a right or wrong answer here. I'm just wondering where you're at. As a jury, have you gotten anything that's interesting to you, Brooklyn? Can you say that one more time for me? I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, so the keys were still at the place where the car was supposed to be. That's a little odd, okay? If you're a jury member and you haven't written that note down, it might be wise to do so, because that's going to kind of clear up a little bit. I have worked for the California Highway Patrol for the past 10 years. Were you on duty on the afternoon of February 9th? Yes, I was patrolling the freeway between Saturday and Ramon on Martinez. Did you observe a uh, red 2004 for red that afternoon? Yes, I did. What was the license of it? 5 CD PX. So, what do you think these keys are going to be? What, what would we consider? What court term, what legal term could we say these keys are? Alyssa? Evidence. Evidence, absolutely. What do you think is the importance of evidence? I know that may seem obvious, but it's really important for us to understand. What is the benefit of bringing physical evidence into the courtroom to show? You're a lawyer, Giovanni, yeah. To give you more insight on what actually happened, and if there is like true, something true, meaning the defense or the witness has been able to crime. Yes, exactly, right? Because who are we trying to convince, especially from a, an attorney or a lawyer's perspective? Are you trying to convince Serafina? of something? The judge? No. Are you trying to convince the officer? Are you trying to convince Lucas? No. What about the court reporter who's got two jobs? No. <laughs> no. Who are you trying to convince? The jury. The jury. And who is in this jury? What is this jury most likely made up of? People Citizen. who, from where? Citizens. What's important for us to do, and what I think I want us to, to really be imagining here, are those notes that we took on court procedures, okay? There is a, a method and a practice to doing this whole process, okay? And the whole point of that method and practice is to ensure what? Going through all this rigmarole, getting people sworn in and having different witnesses testify and different lawyers speak and jurors get it selected. What's the point in all of this? Jamana? Absolutely, because there's a really important idea here that we've talked about in the 14th Amendment, for example, okay, yes, a fair trial, okay, the idea of due process, the idea that each one of you in this room has a responsibility and a right to have equal treatment under the law, okay, that even if you're accused of something, even if you did it, okay, that you have the right to be defended by someone who knows what they're doing, hopefully, unless you hire your, like, I don't know, Uncle Jim, who just graduated from, I don't know, something, <laughs> right? You have the right to have a qualified person to speak on your behalf. All right, thank you so much for joining our class today. We hope you enjoyed our mock trial. Go Hawks!